All right, in our next video, we're going to start talking about sine and cosine. So let's get started here. Again, it all comes back to the unit circle. You can do stuff with sine and cosine in terms of right triangles, but I tend to think about it again in terms of the unit circle. So again, the unit circle is just a circle of radius 1. And I'm just going to draw the top half of it. Okay, so for our circle here, it's going to hit the values of 1, 0 and 0, 1. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put some angles on here. Notice these angles are going to hit the unit circle in different places, obviously. The smallest angle is going to correspond to the angle pi over 6. The one in the middle is going to correspond to the angle pi over 4. And then the biggest angle is going to correspond to pi over 3. Now, the points where these hit are what imp are important. So at pi over 6, it turns out that it's going to hit the graph at the value square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So that is this dot right here on the unit circle. Likewise, at pi over 4, it's going to hit at the value square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And at the top of the circle, or excuse me, at pi over 3 rather, that's going to flip-flop these values at pi over 6, and it's going to end up touching the circle at 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2. So again, these points represent the points on the circle. Okay, so that's the first thing. When we talk about sine and cosine, what we're talking about is the following. So we have some angle. We call our angle again theta. The idea is, again, wherever the point on the graph is, we call that point cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. Okay? So basically, wherever this point is, cosine of theta is going to equal the x-coordinate of that point. Sine of theta is going to equal the y-coordinate of that point. So, referring to our examples above, suppose we had to evaluate a few things. Suppose someone said evaluate. Suppose we wanted to evaluate cosine of pi over 4. And let's evaluate also sine of pi over 4. Well, cosine of pi over 4 Again, I find the angle pi over 4 on my graph. So here's pi over 4. Again, the x-coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. The y-coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 4 equals the x-coordinate. So cosine of pi over 4 is simply going to equal square root of 2 over 2. Whoops. And likewise, sine of pi over 4 is going to equal square root of 2 over 2. Suppose we wanted to evaluate cosine of pi over 3. And let's also evaluate sine of pi over 3. Well, again, you would need to have these values either memorized, basically memorized. Cosine of pi over 3, again, I find the angle pi over 3 on the circle. I think, well, what points go with pi over 3, the angle pi over 3? Well, it hits the unit circle at the values 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Cosine, again, goes with the x-coordinate. So cosine of pi over 3 is the x-coordinate of 1 half. Likewise, sine of pi over 3 is simply going to be the y-coordinate that goes with the angle pi over 3. Well, at the angle pi over 3, the y-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. So that means that sine of pi over 3 is equivalently 
square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Um, likewise, maybe we'll do one other one here. Suppose we wanted to figure out sine of, or at one other angle, sine of pi over 2, and also cosine of pi over 2. Well, recall that the angle pi over 2 is at the top of the circle. Okay. So at pi over 2, again, I have the point 0, 1. Sine of pi over 2, again, represents the y-coordinate. Well, the y-coordinate that goes with the angle pi over 2 is 1. And the x-coordinate that goes with pi over 2 simply is 0. And that's how we evaluate, basically, sine and cosine. Um, you can think about angles on the circle and then values that correspond to those angles. And one little trick just to help me keep them straight is I remember x comes before y in the alphabet. Likewise, c comes before s in the alphabet. So cosine represents the x-coordinate. Sine represents the y-coordinate. Okay? And that's it. That's basically what's going on with sine and cosine is, again, you've got some values to memorize, and then also it's just being able to remember that cosine denotes the x-coordinate, sine denotes the y-coordinate. Let's maybe fill in a few more values, or let's talk about evaluating sine and cosine, rather, at some maybe some different values. Almost always, you know, you can put these in a calculator, if, they, if, if your teacher expects you to evaluate sine and cosine or the other trig functions, which I'm going to talk about in another video, without using a calculator, they're going to always have multiples of pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, or pi over 2. Okay, I don't know off the top of my head what cosine of pi over 5 is. Likewise, I don't know what pi over 7 is. So I only have a handful of values memorized, but even having those handful of values memorized, you can do quite a bit with it. Let's do maybe a couple others just to give an idea on how you can evaluate cosine and sine at some different values. So suppose we want to find out cosine of 5 pi over 6, and likewise maybe we want to figure out sine of 5 pi over 6. Okay, well, again, I notice the denominator is a 6, so the first thing I want to think about is the angle pi over 6. So again, we set at the angle pi over 6, it says this point, again, is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is I have to figure out where the angle 5 pi over 6 is going to be on my circle. So, again, 6 pi over 6, which is the same thing as pi, is the angle all the way 180 degrees around. But we don't want to go to 6 pi over 6. We just want to go to 5 pi over 6. Well, I just reflect this angle around, if this angle is pi over 6, that means the corresponding angle on the left is also pi over 6, but that means that this angle that we're interested in is actually 5 pi over 6. So the angle 5 pi over 6 is going to hit our unit circle right here. Now if you know the values that go with pi over 6, you can easily get the values that go with 5 pi over 6. They're going to be the same numerical values, except for you're going to have to change your signs a little bit. Okay, so I remember, well, over here the y-coordinate is 1 half. I'm still above the x-axis, which means the y-coordinate is still positive. So the y-coordinate at 5 pi over 6 is still 1 half. But instead of being positive 3 halves, I'm now to the left of the y-axis, which means my x-coordinate is going to be negative but it still has that value square root of 3 over 2. So now I can read off cosine of 5 pi over 6. It is simply the x value. So I'll get 
negative square root of 3 over 2. And likewise, sine of 5 pi over 6, that's the y value, I simply get 1 half. Suppose we wanted to figure out cosine of 7 pi over 6, or let's say sine of 7 pi over 6. Well, I would do the same thing. I would think, well, 7 pi over 6 is really 1 pi plus another 1 sixth. So if I reflect this angle down, again, this little angle between the y, excuse me, the x axis is going to be pi over 6. So that means the corresponding angle is going to be 7 pi over 6. And again, that's going to hit our unit circle right here. So again, this corresponds to the angle 7 pi over 6. And now I do the same thing. I just basically am getting values that go with pi over 6. If you think about reflecting the 5 pi over 6 values down, you're going to get the same numerical values, absolute values. But now the x coordinate is still negative. But since I'm below the x axis, the y coordinate will also be negative. So I'll get negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half for the point that goes with 7 pi over 6. So the same way, cosine of 7 pi over 6, again, that is the x coordinate. So I'll get negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 7 pi over 6, likewise, is simply going to be negative 1 half. Okay, so again, this definitely is not exhaustive. It's um, just a little idea on how to get started finding angles and cosine and sine of those. So in my next couple of videos, I'm also going to talk about the other trig functions, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. But those all are related back to sine and cosine. So if you understand sine and cosine well, the other trig functions will kind of come as a result of that. If sine and cosine don't make sense, the other trig functions also probably are not going to make too much sense. So feel free to take a look at my website, and you can find some other related videos there.